All right, welcome to this introduction to swing trading with myself, Jerry Robinson from Follow the Money Daily, and my good friend Jay Peroni, certified financial planner and the founder of Wall Street Renegade, a swing trading system that is now up to date. How much is it year to date right now, Jay? How are you doing so far? Uh, right now it's about 39% year to date as of yesterday. Not too shabby. I'm sure there's a lot of people who like to have that kind of return at the uh, this so far this year. All right, so let's go ahead and dive right in. I want to introduce you to myself. First of all, I am Jerry Robinson. I'm an author, economist, serial entrepreneur, and the founder of FTMDaily.com. I've been an active trader in the financial market since 1996, uh, mainly doing trend trading and uh, some some forms of uh, day trading as well. Also, my uh, my good friend Jay Peroni, he is a certified financial planner, a successful money manager, a business owner, an author, and has 17 years of experience in the financial services industry. And he's, again, the founder of Wall Street Renegade Swing Trading Service. So I want to welcome everyone here. Anyone who has any questions uh, during this presentation, feel free to type them into your question box, and we will be sure to get to those uh, as we go throughout this broadcast. We should have this uh uh, wrapped up in about 45 to 50 minutes, so we'll just uh, dive right in. Jay, any comments to get started before we uh, begin? No, I'm just, no, I'm just excited, excited to share this. Yeah, now I'm getting a little bit of feedback from your... Uh, this opportunity, yeah. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of feedback from your audio, Jay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. Okay, sounds good. Well, let's go ahead and continue. First of all, I want to give you uh, kind of an introduction to different styles of stock trading. There really are a few different styles of stock trading. We, of course, uh, have day trading. Everyone's familiar with that, where you go into the market and you try to carve out some profits, or what they call scalping, where you go in and you try to take a few profits, and you buy and sell all within the same day. Then we have swing trading, which is somewhat different. It's a little longer uh, trade. And then there's position trading, and position trading is, is somewhat different. Let's go through each one of these real quickly and kind of explain the differences uh, of these three different styles. And then we'll explain how our system of swing trading through the Wall Street Renegade is somewhat different. Position trading is also known as trend trading, and it involves long-term trades. Let me give you an example. Uh, you believe, for example, that the U.S. dollar is in a long-term downward trend. So what you do is you place a position trade based upon that. You're not buying and holding for the long run. Instead, you believe that this is a trend that's going to continue, and as soon as you believe the trend is no longer there, you're going to sell. So you're going to try to exploit the entire trend, trying to exploit the entire profit that can be made from that particular trade. Or let's say that you believe that over the course of the next five years, gold is going to continue higher, or maybe Apple stock is going to continue higher. I saw someone on CNBC uh, this week that was talking about how Apple is going to continue going higher and higher and higher for the next several years. So if you believe that to be the case, then you place a position trade and say, I'm going to buy this stock or this asset class, and I'm going to hold it and try to squeeze every ounce of profit out of it. So these are held even during periods of decline because you believe that the overall trend is higher or lower if you're shorting. So the ultimate goal with position trading is to spot a, and profit from a primary trend. Okay, That's position trading. Some people call it buy and hold, but buy and hold investing is more, I'm going to put this into my retirement account and I'm not going to touch it till I'm 65, so just buy and hold. Okay, That's different than position trading. Position, position trading will sell whenever they believe that the trend is over. Okay, now, that's position trading. Let's compare that to swing trading. Swing trading is a form of trend trading that involves short to intermediate term trades. So a swing trader will see that a trend has already begun. He won't try to spot a trend before it begins. He scans the market for existing trends trends that have already begun, trends that are already established, that are already existing. And what he'll do is he'll say, well, I'm, I'm going to buy this uh, particular stock or asset class, and I'm going to buy it uh, on a break, on a break of the trend. So a stock may be rising dramatically, 
and then all of a sudden it stops to take a breather and it enters a period of consolidation. Or maybe it pulls back and retraces just a little bit. In those moments, in that counter trend, whenever the stock begins to slow down just a little bit, if the trader believes that the long-term uh, trend of this stock is higher, then he'll enter on the counter trend. You hear, you hear this called buying on the dips. The reason you buy on the dips is because you believe that the, the stock or the asset is going to continue higher. So buying on the dips is similar to swing trading in the fact that you're coming into an existing established trend and you're buying or placing a trade whenever there's a counter trend. And then you ride it higher. And typically swing traders will not hold for years and years and years. Instead, they may hold for three days to three weeks, sometimes up to 90 days. I've even held some swing trades up to six months. Some people would argue that that's position trading, but I think really when you take a look at the technical side of it, I was riding from one swing, from one counter trend, to the next counter trend. And so to me, that is pure swing trading. Typically, though, positions held by swing traders are held for less than 30 days. The ultimate goal of the swing trader is not to spot a trend before it occurs. It's to identify established and existing trends and then buy them on the dips and then sell them after they have resumed a nice run. Okay, now that's different from day trading. So we have position trading, which I've already explained, swing trading, which I've already explained, and now there's day trading. Day trading involves the entering and exiting of a position within a stock or an asset within the same trading day. Sometimes you can do overnight trading with day trades, but you know day trading is pretty self-evident. It's day trading, so you're trading intraday. You're buying the stock and selling the stock in the same day. Now, these, this is the least profitable, and some would argue that it is potentially the most risky because usually day traders do not look at any fundamentals of a stock. Oftentimes, they don't even know the name of the company. All they know is the, the ticker symbol. And what they'll do is they'll try to exploit an existing and established trend. So if a stock, for example, is moving in an upward position, what a, a day trader will do is he'll hop on the train while it's moving and then hop off maybe a mile later or maybe a, a hundred feet later. He just wants to take a little bit of a little sliver of the profit as it's rising. Uh, so there's many different forms of day trading, but for our purposes here, we'll just say that day traders do not hold positions overnight very often and that their goal is to profit from small moves within a stock several times per day. So if you look at a stock, uh, for example, like Clorox or Walmart or Kimberly Clark or Procter & Gamble, you'll find these stocks are you know, fairly uh, decently priced and they can move anywhere from a dollar, maybe a dollar fifty in one day. So the day trader takes a lot of money, moves it in, and takes a position in those companies and may ride the stock up 10 or 20 cents. And he's happy. You know, he makes his $100 or $1,000 or whatever his goal is that day, and he's done. Um, but normally, day traders who are real serious will make multiple trades all day long. That's where a lot of the risk comes in. Okay, so those are the three forms or three styles of trading that are really the foundation for all trading. And so it's very hard to find anybody who says, I am exclusively a day trader, or I am exclusively a swing trader, or I am exclusively a position trader. In fact, most systems are not pure in any sense at all. Instead, they're kind of a collusion of these different types of trading styles. And Wall Street Renegade system is no different. It is exactly... Uh, the same way as other systems and the fact that it takes some good from each of those types of styles and brings them together. What's nice about the Wall Street Renegade system is that it combines the larger potential profits of position trading. Obviously position traders who spot a trend before it occurs and then ride it all the way to the very top, they make the most profits. Position trading is the most profitable. However, Whenever you have your money tie up in a position for a year or two years or three years, there's something known as opportunity cost. You could have that money used somewhere else, and if it's stagnant or it's not growing very much or it's taking a long time, then you're losing money because you could have that money somewhere else. 
So the Wall Street Renegade system basically takes the best of the position trading, spotting a trend before it begins, but then it combines it with the shorter holding time of swing trading. So we're not trying to spot a trend and ride it all the way to the very top. Instead, we want to find something and make quick money within you know, a period of weeks, sometimes a couple of months, and then sometimes less than a week. So there really is no very, uh, you know, rule here on the holding periods. We want to uh, exploit uh, a particular trend uh, when, it, when we see it beginning. Now, I want Jay to uh, kind of discuss how he goes about doing that because Jay is the founder, uh, the visionary for the company. He's the one who developed the system. Jay, talk to our audience real quickly about the system itself. How do you identify these stocks? What makes them, what are you scanning the markets for? And uh, you can also speak to perhaps how you view your system in regards to position trading, swing trading, and day trading. Yeah, that's, that's a great point, Jerry. It, the Wall Street Renegade system actually combines all three of the systems in that what it does is it looks at individual opportunities and whether it be a, a stock that's been rising or a stock that's about to rise what it's looking at is unusual option activity that's really the main driver of the system it's looking at what's going on with an individual company and why why is there a lot of speculation is there something in the works maybe it's the company's up for fda approval or maybe they've got a major acquisition or deal in the works. Or maybe they're about to report their earnings, and all of a sudden you, you're seeing people buying the options in order to bring up the, the share price, believing that the company's going to beat their earnings. So you're seeing that rise in the option activity. So these are usually the triggering events. So once our system identifies companies with unusual activity, we would then go in and start looking at the charts, start looking at the technicals, looking at is this kind of a blip on the radar screen, is there something substantial to this opportunity? So not only do you have kind of a uh, computer program that's doing a lot of the research and digging and so forth, but you get the human element to look at and see, okay, is this a valid trend or is it something that doesn't make sense or should we throw it out because it's you know really nothing that we're interested in? So you get kind of the best of both worlds where it is position trading, where we're looking at the fundamentals of the company, but then it moves over to swing trading where we're also looking at the opportunity uh, in the technicals and, and holding that for a period of time, anywhere between as little as a couple of days to as many as 20 weeks. We've held some stocks for 20 weeks, so it, it's a little bit more long term than the general swing trading system, which most of those will be, you know, a couple days to a couple weeks is the maximum, where our system will go a little bit longer and ride the opportunity as long as we can, as long as the option activity there will continue to hold the position. Jay, whenever I first started trading, I cut my teeth on swing trading. In fact, the very first thing I did was I was working for a company uh, called TV Guide at the time. I was a salesman for TV Guide way back in the mid-90s. And I was watching their stock, and their stock fell into this channel. It was going back and forth, back and forth. I remember now, I can, I can still see that chart in my mind where it would go up, and it would hit a point of resistance, and it would come down and hit a point of support. And normally those cycles only last for maybe three or four times. This stock fell into a channel for a couple of years. And so I began playing that stock, buying on the support, selling on the resistance. Buying, I didn't know how to sell short then. I would have sold, you know, sold the short, stock short on the resistance and wrote it down to the support. But uh, that's how I learned. And so I really was a swing trader and didn't know it. Later I got into day trading. And one of the problems with day trading, aside from the fact that it's in, you know, filled with risk, is the fact that you have to sit in front of your computer all day long. And many people who are working all day long, or maybe they're, meeting people and having appointments, they, they don't have time to sit in front of a computer all day and watch, you know, numbers and all of that. So what's nice about this system and what's nice about swing trading in general is that you don't have to sit in front of your computer all day long. You can, you know, do the research, you know, with your system, you send out the alerts on these particular stocks. They come out through email. 
and then people can look at them, do their own due diligence on them, place a trade before they go to work one morning, and then just how often do you recommend that they monitor it? Certainly not every single really once a day, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, we, the way that our system is designed, and we're going to get into four of the rules that we generally recommend that people uh, utilize in, the, in using the system, but generally we'll send an update maybe once a day, if that, depending on what's going on, but usually if they're monitoring it once a day, that's usually sufficient. And you normally uh, tell, and we'll get into this as well, but you normally have a buy up to price, which is really nice because many people may see a stock, but they don't know if they've already missed the boat. You have a buy up to price. So you say, you know, buy up to $8 or buy up to $16, indicating that buying past that, they might miss a large line share of the gains. Is that right? That's correct, yeah. I mean, once, once the, the stock goes above the buy up to price, the profit potential is minimized, so we, we've kind of set a target of what we're trying to achieve in the position, whether it be a 20 or 30 percent gain, and if the stock's already risen 20 percent, that means there's limited upside in our opinion, and if you buy too high, the odds are not in your favor any longer. So we always like to try to stack the odds in your favor, so that's why we have the suggested buy up to price. And then on the flip side, we also set a stock loss price. To, uh, to help as well. You know, the, the other benefit to this system is the magnified investment returns, which you can get from any type of swing trading environment or day trading because you're not dependent upon one or two or three or 10 or 20 stocks averaging out to be, as Jay said at the beginning of this program, he's up year to date about 39%. Well, it's hard to do with one stock or a portfolio of stocks. But whenever you're catching stocks that are moving up in a dramatic way because of this abnormal options activity, and you also couple that with a brief holding time, that means that you can deploy capital, exploit the gain, and then move the capital back into your account as cash, and then deploy it again, and then bring it back as cash. This allows you to amplify and magnify your annual investment returns, and that's one of the big benefits of any kind of a swing trading system. Now, Jay, you have four rules for traders. Let's go through these four rules. Yeah, the four rules are really something that we've developed. Any system has to have a set of parameters because what we've found is if you don't have a set of parameters, what can often happen is you go into it and not understand what you need to do next. And these rules will help prevent mistakes because often it's the mistakes that get us into trouble. And if we don't stick to our system, we can get off track very quickly. So the four rules that we've set up for, for traders are number one, this system is more aggressive. So never invest money you cannot afford to lose. That's most important because this is not something you put your entire life savings in. This is not something you put your entire IRA or retirement accounts in. It's money that you're setting aside for uh, trading. And you should have some core positions, your gold, your core stocks, your core portfolio. This is in addition to what you've already established. So number one, never invest money you cannot afford to lose. These trades are high risk and can rise or fall by 25% or more in a single day. So you have to use caution before trading. Number two, we recommend that people have a stop loss in place with a maximum that they're prepared to lose. We normally suggest a minimum of 10%. That's kind of the lowest that we'd suggest, up to 20, 25% or more, depending on your comfort level with risk. Number three, buy only up to the recommended buy price. We set that, as we talked about, that's our price target, the maximum that we'd be willing to pay for it. And then lastly, have fun trading. Become a student of the markets. Always be learning. Jay, uh, one of the things that you know many people will say is, well, if the if the system's already up thirty nine percent, then why not put all the money in it? You know that makes sense. I mean, well, it's the same reasoning that we use with gold. I mean, gold has had a tremendous track record over the last eleven years, but we know that past performance is no guarantee for future results, and so it's very important that people who are listening to this realize that this is only to be used for your speculative capital. Anytime you're trading. I mean, trading itself is inherently risky. Uh, you can lose it all. 
Um, so it's one of those things that you want to be very, very cautious with. I love the fact that you stress the idea of a stop loss. I have never traded without stop losses. I think they're the most important thing that you can use. They're insurance for your trades, in essence, and they're free. So you might as well use them. And the other thing that people want to keep in mind is that for those of you who are on our five levels of financial freedom, this is level five activity. So if you're in still in level two, you're just trying to get all of your ducks in a row, this is not quite the place where you want to be you know, taking your money and putting it because you need to have adequate uh, savings. You want to have adequate um, you know, uh, other types of assets, and you want to be well positioned before you begin speculating like this. We don't want to try to use this to hit a home run and then lose money and then uh, be worse off than we were when we first started. Let's take a look at a couple of charts, Jay, that show the power of this system. We'll show a few that, uh, that worked out and one that didn't. So we can see that you know, this system does not always work. No system is 100%. You've identified that your trades are working. I mean, how many of your trades so far are up and how many of them are down? Do you have a percentage? Yeah, it's between 60 and 70% are usually winning trades. Some of them are home runs where they'll, they'll be double-digit trades. Some of them will be kind of mediocre, and then we do have some that will be double-digit losses. So the opportunities that we see each and every day, you're going to have some winning trades and some losing trades. That's why, again, you have to have a system in order to know when to cut your losses and when to ride the winners. So we're looking at the chart for MOBY or MOBI, uh, up 61% in 11 weeks, 35% in one day. Tell us where you bought, where you sold, how all that happened. Yeah, we basically uh, started to see some option activity on this particular stock in uh, November of 2011, and what we saw was the the stock really started to show us some some indications that there was. And, and a deal in the works. Uh, they were looking at a deal with Sina, which is ticker symbol S-I-N-A. So we started buying this stock, and we've been in and out of it, actually. The system would tell us, you know, the option activity is high, so let's be in the stock, and then it would kind of work its way out of the system. So we were in and out of the stock several times over an 11-week period, making 61% on this particular stock, and in one day, it alerted us that the option activity was incredible. So in one day, there was a period where it went up 35 percent, and then the option activity subsided, you know, kind of went away after that. So it was a good indication to us to get out, let's lock in our profit. So we were able to make 35 percent in one day with that particular stock. The next one, MDVN, it was up 341% in 20 weeks. Where did you enter this one, and how did you find this one? Yeah, this one, again, the option activity was there. Um, we started to see this one in January, February of 2012, where, excuse me, November of 2011 as well, where all of a sudden the option activity was just spiking. And there was a, a lot of speculation on the current month's options as well as the following month's options. And this one actually stayed on our radar screen for 20 weeks. This wasn't one we were in and out of. It kept showing unusual activity. So we rode the wave for 20 weeks to a profit of over 341%. And what it was is one of their drugs won FDA approval three months earlier than expected. So there were people that were speculating that they get FDA approval, and then once they actually did, the stock skyrocketed. It went from around $20 a share to 75 We got out around 75 and it continued up, and it's now at 100 So we missed some of the upside, but we don't want to get greedy. That's kind of our system is when the option activity kind of goes away, we don't want to just hang in there and hope it works out. Our system is very dedicated and focused on option activity. So what, what price did you buy this at? Uh, it was around $20.31. So down here is where you started? That's correct, yes. That's pretty good. And where did you end up selling at? We got out at $75.15 a share. So somewhere up here. Okay, so you can see, uh, obviously, this was a great ride. 
Now, the thing to notice is is that uh, it continued to go higher. Some people uh, may want to take on additional risk whenever Jason's at a sell alert. You can always just take that sell alert and move it to a stop loss order or maybe tighten your stops because you can see that it continued higher. His system just simply stopped flashing the buy signal and it looked like it was time to sell. Uh, nevertheless, you know, selling there was, you know, in retrospect, you know, you missed out on gains. Some people would say, don't be greedy, just sell and take your profits. Others might say, well, you know, why not sell half of it and then maybe put a stop loss on the rest and really tighten up that stop loss. I want to show you something else with this chart, which is very interesting. As you notice, this is an obvious uptrend that's occurring right here. Now, you will see that it kind of almost looks like it's inside of a channel as well. But notice these pullbacks. This is clearly what swing trading is. It's never been so evident in the chart as this one. As the stock moves up, you'll see the counter trend. It comes down and swings up. That is the swing. It comes down, comes back up, comes down and swings up. There is the swing. You see it right here. It swings up. Uh, you see it again here. It swings up. The swing traders come in and catch these swings. They don't buy it here. They wait until it's uh, completely um, moved down, and then they see it begin to come back up, and they buy it right about there as it's moving back up. So swing traders would have missed a large majority of this run. They would have bought maybe somewhere up here and maybe sold somewhere up here. So the system actually does uh, amplify returns even from swing traders. Okay, Groupon. This was a big miss. Uh, the earnings miss was pretty bad. This stock has been pummeled. Uh, where did you buy? Where did you sell? And what indicated that this was a buy? Yeah, sometimes what ends up happening is the system, as I mentioned, will alert us to stocks that are going to rise or fall dramatically. And this happened to be one that was indicating it would rise, but it actually went the opposite direction. Uh, on August 13th, our system identified that Groupon was showing some unusual activity. Their earnings were going to be coming out, and it seemed to be that the earnings were going to beat expectations. That's kind of what the option activity was telling us. And we went in on August 13th, and we bought at $7.55 a share approximately. And then what ended up happening is they missed their earnings substantially. They actually were down quite a bit. And the next day, the stock dropped about $2 a share and was in the five. So we had a stop loss in place and got out when the stock opened, but it was down about 20 25% from where we bought it. Yeah, so that system obviously is not completely 100% perfect. You will at times have losers, and I think that's really important to stress that not every single one of the trades that are sent out are winners, and that's why it's so important that when you're using any system, whether it's a system like Wall Street Renegade or uh, any other system that you use, that you do your own due diligence. So you never want to just take anyone's word. You want to take that as a suggestion or a, a nice recommendation to dig further. So again, this is not a 100% system, but it does have a good track record for sure, and it's made me money, and I know it's made many other people money. A R N. Yeah, can I give you an example. Let me give you yeah. another example too, Jerry, of uh, how sometimes it can work to our advantage as well. There was a uh, alert that I gave out to our Wall Street Renegade subscribers on Friday, and we were showing some unusual option activity, and it was a cancer drug. And what ended up happening is we issued the alert on Friday after the market was closed and told people to buy up to this particular price. And when the stock opened up on Monday morning, come to find out their cancer results were not as favorable as people were hoping. They weren't you know, rotten by any stretch of the imagination, but people's expectations had gotten ahead of the stock. So the stock opened up down about 25% on Monday morning. And those who were brave enough who went in on Monday morning and were able to pick up shares at, you know, $6.50 a share up to $7 are sitting pretty nice right now. The stock's back up to almost 8 So sometimes a huge drop in price can work to our advantage. If you got someone there who knows what they're doing, I told people, hold tight. It's a great company. You know, don't get worried. If you can get it under our buy price, I lowered our buy price a little bit to $7.10. But since then, the stock's up to, uh, like I said, almost $8 a share. Not bad. 
Okay, the next one is ARNA, up 40% in three weeks. Where did you buy this one, and how, uh, how did the system alert you to buy this? Yeah, again, this was uh, playing on the, uh, the option activity, and this has been a, a strong stock for us. We've been in and out of this one quite, quite a few times as well. The, uh, the diet drugs have gotten real hot, you know, with a lot of the FDA approval from some of the drugs uh, to help in the weight loss area. People are always trying to lose weight. So ARNA is one that we started buying uh, all the way back this year in May. And May 18th, we were able to get in at $5.52. And then we were able to get out on June 18th at $9.38. So we've had, you know, quite a few of these. You know, we started buying and selling as well. So we've got a few where we went in and out of this position, you know, buying in the, in the mid fives up to six. And then getting out, you know, seven, eight, nine, uh, as far as the share price, making a profit on each of those trades, and again, kind of play, playing the trend. And this is one that uh, we've gone back into several times since we sold it, but we're able to make forty percent in a matter of three weeks just following the trend. Jay, this is interesting because we look at this and we see, you know, who would not like to buy this stock right here? I mean, this is a parabolic rise that occurs in just a handful of days. And you mentioned the options activity, the unusual or abnormal options activity that alerts you to this. Some people who are not familiar with options may not even know what that means or why that's important. Briefly explain what that means uh, in layman's terms. Yeah, basically what a call option is, is it gives someone the right but not the obligation to buy uh, an underlying financial instrument. It could be a stock. It could be a commodity. But basically, it's a contract that has a set expiration. And normally, the ones that I'm looking at are ones that expire in 30 or 60 days. So if somebody's speculating or willing to pay a lot of money for something that may or may not come true, it really indicates to me that they, they have some confidence that some type of event is going to take place in the near future. Because you could lose that entire amount of money that you pay for that option contract. In other words, you're exchanging a value of money for a set period of time to be able to buy that instrument at a certain price. So let's take, for example, a stock right now is trading at, uh, you know, let's just say $20 a share. You may be buying a contract right at $20 or maybe even higher than $20 that you believe the stock's going to go up in value. So you're going to pay for a contract to buy that stock in the future, and depending on what your outlook is for that stock, you may be able to pay more or less depending on the supply and demand for that particular contract. So we look at these option contracts, and as we start to see these premiums rising where people are paying more and more for these contracts, that indicates to us that there's something there. Then we start to dive deeper and say, okay, what's going on with this company? Are there any things that we can see that have been announced? Sometimes we can see, oh, yes, you know, look here, next month they're up for FDA approval or, you know, there's been rumors that they're going to be a takeover target or maybe they're acquiring another company. We start to go through the news to see if there's anything that we can dig out on the company. So that's, that's kind of the process that we go through to, to find these opportunities. The next chart on the list is TiVo. This is a trader's dream right here. We love to see volatility when we're trading. And this allows us to uh, get in and get out. And uh, where did you buy TiVo and where did you sell it? Yeah, this was really a two-day trade, Jerry. This is one where on uh, April 18th of 2011, our system alerted us that there was some really abnormal activity. I mean, just strange activity for, for calls that were way out of the money, that people were buying these. And we couldn't figure out what it was, but our system was giving us a strong enough alert that we went in on the 18th and we bought it $8.62 a share. And less than uh, two days later, the stock opened at $11.71. And that to us was a nice profit in a short period of time. We, we didn't want to get greedy, so we sold two days later and, uh, and made a substantial profit there on TiVo. And what had happened is they had a settlement agreement. I mean, 35% in a couple days is a pretty good trade. I mean, you have a couple of those in a year and you're doing quite well 
but this one was a matter of a couple days where they had a settlement agreement and all of a sudden their stock went up 35 percent in a matter of days. Yeah, that's fantastic. And many may, may look at this chart and say, well, we don't see that the, the line goes up that high, but you should also take into account that this is a weekly chart, so it takes uh, all of the weekly closes uh, for, for each week. And so if it didn't close at that price, then you won't see it on this chart. So it certainly could have went up that high uh, without it looking like it on this chart. Okay, so that's, that's good. That's really good. Uh, final one is Pandora P, up 22% in one day. Yeah, this was one, again, the, uh, the option activity for us was signaling right around Pandora's earnings that they, there was a lot of speculation that they were going to beat their earnings. Unlike Groupon that missed their earnings, Pandora came out and actually far exceeded expectations for investors. So we were able to go in on the 27th and buy at $9.91. And then when it opened on the 30th, we were able to get out at $12.06. So in a, a matter of a, a, a day there, we were able to make a significant gain. Nice. That's a, that's a real nice trade. I remember that one. I remember getting the alert on that one. That was a, that was a great call. Okay, so let's talk about what is required for you to actually uh, be involved with Wall Street Renegade if you want to receive these types of swing trading alerts in your inbox, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? It'd be nice if you could wake up in the morning and receive, uh, you know, a couple of alerts, you know, a few times a week, once a week, twice a week, three times a week, and actually have an idea that you can research. Instead of all the noise that's out there, I mean, I subscribe to the Wall Street Journal and Investor's Business Daily and Economist Magazine. Yeah. That's great stuff, but at the same time, you have to dig way deep down to even find a real good investing idea there. Wouldn't it be nice just to get an email uh, from a system that says, hey, we've identified that there's some abnormal options activity occurring. This stock could go up, and if you want to, you might want to consider buying up to this price. And then you can do your own due diligence, see if you agree, look at the chart, see if you like it, and then buy it and then place a stop loss. You set your stop loss at whatever stop loss order, you know, you would want to place it at. If you're comfortable with a potential 10% loss or maybe a 15% loss or even larger like a 25% loss, that's your call. That's what your, that's your, uh, it's your decision. But what you need to get started, obviously, besides an email account, so you can receive the emails, is a brokerage account or an IRA open at some sort of discount broker, hopefully, that way you'll save money on the transactions. So maybe like a Scott trade or an E-Trade or as Jay has mentioned, Folio investing, uh, and there's a few other share builder. I think is another one that people can use. There's just you know yeah, any, yep. any one of these types of discount brokerages where you can buy and sell instantly through your computer or through your smartphone. That's very nice. So you can get the alert at work. You can see it. You can buy or sell the uh, stock right there through your through your iPhone or your smartphone or from your work computer. You certainly need to have access to high speed internet. Uh, there's nothing worse, I'll tell you, there's nothing worse than trying to trade on, you know, the AOL, you know, I remember that <laughs> connection, you know, I mean, there's just impossible to get a good trade on, on dial-up, so you've got to have a good high-speed internet, and again, you need a proven stock-picking system, and I would tell you that you don't just need one, I would say that you need several, I think it's important to surround yourself, the multitude of counselors, there is safety, that's even a proverb, uh, a Jewish proverb, so it's important to constantly have good ideas around you, this will be a great system for you to add to your arsenal. And right now you can add this service uh, for a very, very, very low price. Uh, at the end of the month, this service is going to go higher. Uh, last time we did this webinar, Jay, uh, we, were, uh, we were running pretty high on the number of people. Now you sent out an email yesterday saying that there's only a few spots left at these current prices. Once we have 100 customers in the uh, Wall Street Renegade system, it's going to double in price. It's going to go uh, up by 50%, or actually by 100%. And so let's talk about what they're going to receive if they pull the trigger and buy the Wall Street Renegade swing trading service. Tell them what they're going to get, Jay. Yeah, they're going to get two to five fast-moving trades delivered to their inbox each week. And we quick, quickly get these trades to you along with specific buy below prices, as well as sell alerts. We tell you when we're buying, when we're selling, what the stop losses should be, what we're setting them at. 
so that you can have an, a, you know, some information that you're able to take and do your own diligence and own research, but you at least have a starting point to see what ideas that we've offered, that we've kind of identified, and if you want to take it to the next level and actually purchase, you at least have these in front of you in your email. You also get a weekly briefing. Over the weekend each week, you'll get a summary of all of our open positions, kind of what our thoughts are, where we're going with these, you know, if there's something that we say hold off on, the stock's too high in price, we'll tell you that. And then you'll also get midweek alerts as we see new opportunities and new ideas, or if something's happening with a particular stock, like this week with the cancer drug we were talking about, we issued a special alert saying, you know, the stock drops, now's a great time to get in, uh, you know, that type of thing. You'll get 24 seven day a week access to our members only website that's going to be developed. Uh, we're in the process of finishing the website. So as a founding member, once it goes live, you'll have members only access to the website. And then also you get a 100% risk free guarantee. You can try the system over the next 30 days. Uh, no questions asked, 100% refund. And then after three, 30 days, we stand behind it as well. So we would give the balance of your uh, subscription if you're not happy, you know, even after the 30 days. So again, there's a lot here that uh, we've put together and we believe it's a very attractive price compared to the competition that's out there. Yeah, and you do send out a good amount of emails uh, kind of uh, reaffirming some of the things that you're doing and I think that's really good. The communication is uh, is very strong on this uh, on this product, so I'm really happy with the service. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a customer. I like it. Um, I've made money with it. And I love the fact that you provide the 30-day uh, risk-free trial because even though it's not really a trial, it's a guarantee, uh, for 30 days you can get all your money back. And from that point on, you say that you give them a, a prorated return. So maybe they have it for six months and they say, you know, I'm just, this is not working for me and I'm not able to make this work. Then you, then you give them uh, their money back on a prorated basis, which I think is very, very generous. So for those of you who are watching right now, uh, you can get started today. You can actually purchase this service by going to ftmdaily.com slash renegade. That is ftmdaily.com slash renegade. You can sign up for one year of the Wall Street Renegade for five ninety seven. Now you'll notice over here that it's normally eleven ninety seven. Normally meaning that's the price that it's going to go to. So we're going to see that price uh, starting next week. And so, well, I guess not next week, but, uh, well, maybe next week. It all depends on how many people sign up, but certainly by the end of the month. Now, if you choose to go quarterly instead, those cost $197 per quarter. So every three months, you pay $197. You can see that it's a much better deal to buy by the year. Uh, after uh, the end of this month, that price is going to rise to $397 per quarter. So whatever price you buy at, whatever price you buy at, that's your price forever. That's the that's the deal that Jay is basically giving, correct? If they buy at five ninety seven and you raise the price to eleven ninety seven and then it goes to two thousand five hundred dollars, I mean who knows how high these things can go. These these swing trading services out there are very expensive because if they make you money, then they're pennies in the bucket compared to what you're actually paying for them. But if they pay five ninety seven, Jay, and you raise the price to three thousand dollars five years from now, are they still paying five ninety seven? Do they have your word on that? They do, yes. That's, that's one thing that we always stand behind is you get grandfathered in at whatever price that we give to you when you first come in. It's not like a teaser rate or anything like that. You get this price for as long as you remain a member. So we stand behind that, and that's something that we've always honored. Yeah, I would say if I were, if I were listening to this and I were wanting to potentially use this system, but I would, just wasn't real, real sure, what I would do is take advantage of the 597 now. That way I could lock it in in the event that I really liked it. And I would try it for 30 days. I would see if I liked it. I would see if it was making me money. I would see if I liked the way the system worked. And if I didn't, I would get my money back and know that I didn't lose anything. But if you, if it turns out you do want this service and you don't lock it in this month, then you're going to pay double and the, that price will always be double. So that's just kind of unfortunate for those who buy after uh, the end of this month. So 597 for the year, 197 per quarter. 
and I think that's a real generous, uh, real generous offer. I want to open up the uh, conversation now to any questions or comments that anyone might have. You can feel free to type those into the question box there on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, you just type in any questions for Jay or for myself, and we'd be happy to uh, to issue or to to deal with those. Uh, Jeff has uh, a comment or a question that says. Jay, when you issue a buy in one of your emails that we get at night, is it best to buy quick the next morning? Jerry avoids buying for his trigger trades during the first half hour, which I get, but I don't know if that applies here. Sometimes I see the stock inch past the buy up to price during the first half hour. You know what, uh, Jay, before you tackle that, let me just briefly uh, explain. In, in our FTM Insider area, we have trigger trades, and these are day trades. And because day trades are so volatile, we and because the uh, because of the system that we've developed is so uh, unique, it's important for us not to buy during the first 30 minutes of the day because it's so volatile. Now, that's a rule for our system. Jay, does that same rule apply to yours? I wouldn't think that it would. But no, no, it's, it's really as long as you can get under the buy up to price, that's really what we're looking at. So a lot of times time is of the essence and you may never, you know, if you wait for it and all of a sudden news comes out, the stock, I've seen it open, you know, at $4 a share and by the end of the day it's at 6 or $7 and it never got back below that $4 level. So you can miss the train if you wait around too much. Again, if you can get under the price that we suggest, that's really what we're we're looking at. Got it. Okay. And I have another uh, question here coming in from Pete. Pete says, uh, "Jay, do you actually purchase uh, these stocks? Do you, you know, as as a disclosure, are, are you actually buying these stocks yourself?" Uh, we do. Yes, we we have a Folio trading account, and we place them through Folio's trading window, so we don't. Um, we put them in the, the same time that we're sending out the alerts. And our trades typically only go off between 11 and 2 o'clock. 11 in the morning and 2 o'clock is typically where Folio's windows open. So a lot of times people are beating us to the punch. But uh, essentially, we, we're using Folio for lower commissions and then a simplified process. And so you actually have a portfolio that's called the Wall Street Renegade Portfolio where people have given you money and said, I want to use this for trading, but I don't want to fool with trading, so I want you to do it. And then, you know, so then maybe they have a $100,000 portfolio, and they say, I want to take $10,000 of this and use it for trading, and the rest of it I'm just going to use for normal buy and hold situations. So you actually have people who come to you and say, hey, just whatever you see, buy and sell it. You handle it yourself. You do it all yourself. And... You actually have, and so that's that's what you're using to buy. Are you personally putting money in, or are you just using the money from your clients? Uh, you kind of broke up there. What was the question? Oh, the question was, uh, so so are you personally putting money in yourself, or are you just using the client's money to buy? In other words, are, do you have any personal stake in the stocks? Um, I typically use options myself, so I don't have any per personal interest in this. I'm doing it for clients. I use a lot of option contracts on on these. Got it. Okay. Now, another question uh, coming in from Diane. She says, I'd like to uh, know if you use anything besides PayPal due to a personal objection she has with PayPal. Yeah, PayPal is not great, Diane. I, I totally agree with you. But uh, that's currently the only, the only way that they can pay right now. Can they pay by check, Jay? They can, yes. That, that would be the other alternative. So, so Diane, you can pay by check. Jay, give the details of, uh, of, of where they would, who they would make that check out to and where they would mail it. Uh, they would make that check payable to Faith-Based Investor, LLC, and they would mail that to 3302 South Morgan's Point Road, number 180, in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, 29466. Okay, let's repeat that. You'll make the check out to Faith Based Investor LLC, and then you will mail it to 3302 South Morgan's Point Road, Morgan's Point, number 180, number 180, in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, 
29466 is the zip code. That's right on the beach, isn't it, Mount Pleasant? It is, yeah, right outside of Charleston. Yeah, it's a beautiful area, beautiful area. All right, any other questions or uh, comments for Jay right now? Well, the markets have been fun lately with the QE3, huh? They <laughs> have, absolutely. It's been, it's been like riding the waves. It's been fun. Uh, Steve says, uh, do you primarily use a software program that looks at option trades? Do you incorporate breaking news um, in any of your uh, re research, Jay? So I guess, uh, do you primarily use a software program that looks at option trades? And do you incorporate breaking news in your research? Uh, we look at, yeah, we've built a, a, a number of different systems that allow us to look at option activity. And then we bring it into our own system. And we're able to take a look at, in our own system, whether it, number one, meets our criteria that we're looking for. And then number two, we want to make sure, above and beyond our criteria, what is the breaking news that's out there. So we do have breaking news that comes in on each and every position that we have open. Uh, the second part of Steve's question was, do you offer a monthly option? And, uh, and Jay, we discussed that, and you decided basically that it was probably best just to use quarterly and annual uh, because the monthly would be pretty would be pretty costly compared to uh, to what they could do for the year by the quarter. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. So so no monthly option currently, and probably not in the future. But uh, just to answer that question. All right. Any other questions for Jay Peroni uh, in the Wall Street Renegade Swing Trading Service? Any swing trading questions? Trading questions? Questions about the system? Any of his uh, picks up to this point? Any of the charts you've seen today? Or the markets in general. Any final questions? We are at the uh, nearing the end here of this broadcast. We did it. We did it good, Jay. We were able to keep it all in one hour. How about that? We do. Uh, we do have another question by Steve. Do you offer trades on commodities, Jay? Uh, we used to do some trading on commodities, and what we found is the system is a lot less reliable. What it does is it looks at ETFs that may track commodities, and uh, it, it just has been a lot less reliable. And that, those were some of the uh, mistakes that we saw. We've been tracking using this system for over two years. It's, it's been live trades that we've been doing for two years. And some of our worst trades have been on, uh, on ETFs that were tracking commodities, because uh, a lot of times it will identify some that are two or three times bullish, we're bearish, and that can go against you very quickly. So uh, we, we, we identify those opportunities, and we'll send them out from time to time, but our system will not incorporate it into our actual trading. Got it. Well, if you would like to receive Jay's Wall Street Renegade, I mean, I get it. I, I, I get the emails. I, uh, I check them often. I do a lot of trading myself, a lot of day trading, overnight trading, sometimes short-term swing trading, three or four days have a few open positions right now. One of them is uh, one of Jay's stocks, and it's done well. And if you would like to receive these ideas in your inbox, you got to pay for that, obviously. You know, you don't get free information out there. There's lots of, by the way, be very careful, because out on the web you can find sometimes free, I, I, one of the most popular things today is free penny stocks. We're going to tell you free penny stocks. And if you look down at the very bottom in the disclaimer in the the, the print you have to magnify to, to read. It says, by the way, uh, we are compensated for all of the stocks that we promote on our website. Yeah. <laughs> so they're getting like $25,000 or $50,000 just to promote the stock. So no wonder they think the stock's going to pop, you know. And so, you know, be very careful out there. You get what you pay for. And Jay's been around for 17 years, uh, certified financial planner. You know, he's made a lot of money trading. He knows what he's doing. And while this system is not going to give you 100% accuracy, you're not going to make money on every single trade. I tell you what, you're really going to up your chances of making good money in the markets. And there's going to be plenty of money to be made in the markets forever, friends, forever. Trading has been a, a way of life. It's been a way people have made money. You buy something for a quarter, you sell it for 50 cents. Every business does that, that, that works uh, yeah, with goods and retail. You buy something lower and you sell it a little bit higher. Sometimes your profit margins can be small. Sometimes they can be huge. Jay happens to specialize in stocks that he thinks are going to provide huge profit margins, huge profit returns in a short amount of time. So it's a valuable service. 
It's available right now for $5.97 for the entire year. You can pay by PayPal or you can pay by check. And uh, if you'd like to, uh, to buy online right now, you can do so, ftmdaily.com slash renegade. Now, you know we're not flashy and we don't, we don't act uh, crazy with our promotions and tell you all, <laughs> all kinds of crazy things. So i got to be honest with you and tell you that this price, $5.97, is going to go away. And that's not some sort of, you know, we're going out of business sale. This is really going to happen. I mean, at $5.97 right now, it's going up. It's going to go up to $1,200 uh, as soon as we have the 100th person who becomes a member of this service. We're getting close. Or whenever we reach the end of the month, at the end of September. At that point, it's going to be $1,200. It's going to no longer be $597. It's going to be $1,200. So the price will go up, and it's not going to change uh, back down to $597. So I want you to, to realize that, uh, that this is not some sort of hype or game at all. I mean, we literally want you to be able to get in and keep this service at 597 If you scan the marketplace right now looking for a similar service like this, you won't find one for $597 anywhere. Uh, so it's a very unique service, and it's very well priced at this price. And I, uh, I think 50 bucks a month, when you break it down, 600 bucks a year, 50 bucks a month to somebody who's looking at the markets every day and is going to give you insights on stocks that could potentially pop. And to me, that's just, that's just worth it. So if you're, a, uh, if you're a renegade investor out there, you like to trade stocks a little bit on the side, you're looking for good ideas, you, I would not pass this up. 597 and you can go to ftmdaily.com slash renegade, slash renegade, and you can get uh, signed up right now for that special deal of 597 Jay, I hope you uh, have a good rest of your day. Uh, any, uh, any plans for the weekend coming up? Uh, no, just hitting the beach. You know, gotta enjoy that beach weather. So <laughs> absolutely, you you and the five kiddos. How many? Four or five? Four kiddos. Four, four kiddos. kiddos. That's right. So. That's right. I, yep. I remember counting four heads. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, so we, my wife says sometimes I'm like a kid. So yeah, right. Like so she, she has she has five kids. <laughs> yep. Those of you who uh, well, I don't think we ever sent out any pictures, but Jay and I and Tom Cloud were all out on uh, St. Simon's Island hanging out with Tom at his house, and we went out to uh, on this boat. Uh, all of us went out on this. Remember that shrimp boat we went out on? And we, yeah, got, some, we got some pictures. Yeah, and the, it was the weirdest thing. Uh, they would take, they, we went on this boat. It was Tom and his wife and me and Jennifer and uh, Jay and his wife and, and the four kiddos. And we all went out there on this shrimp boat, and we went out on the Atlantic, and they were actually uh, calling the bottom of the sea with this net. And they would bring it up, and then they would just kind of dump it all out on the back. And they didn't just get shrimp. They got like one of those. We saw like uh, uh, hammerhead crabs and sharks and just all kinds of weird uh, or no horseshoe crabs. I think is what they were called. I can't remember what they were called. Remember those? They were yeah. real weird looking. And uh, so we have a couple of pictures of me holding a shark and Jay holding a shark, and and it was just a really weird time. But they actually cooked the shrimp right there on the boat. They took the shrimp live and they just threw it in the bucket and began boiling them up. If you've never had uh, shrimp straight out of the ocean like that, you're missing, you're missing out. That was good, good stuff. Uh, so we need to put some of those pictures up, Jay. That, that was a fun time. We need to do Yeah, it. absolutely. That was a good time. It was. All right, so Wall Street Renegade, ftmdaily.com slash renegade. If they want to call you, Jay, and personally talk to you and ask you questions, give them your number. Uh, they can call me at 866-594-9919. Again, 866-594-9919. Sounds good. I hope everybody has a great uh, rest of your day. We're going to have a great radio show for you lined up uh, here at the 